Well, straight back to one of those headline stories, Northern Rock uh, and ministers now being urged to take action over the growing number of homes being repossessed by Northern Rock. Let's talk to Andrew Fisher from the think tank Left Economics Advisory Panel. He's there in our central London studios. Uh, how surprised are you by this? I think people will be very worried about it. I mean, Northern Rock is currently repossessing homes at a rate of about three times um, the average bank in this country. And this is the bank that was first nationalised by the government um, about six or eight months ago now. I think people wanted, expected the government not to just have a sort of business as usual bailout, but to actually get something in return for that. And that meant, seeing as it's public money, a return for the public. That means people staying in their homes, that means lower interest rates for borrowing. That means you know, less aggressive tactics, and this palpably hasn't happened. I think people are concerned. Northern Rock are obviously denying it, but in your view, what should be happening here in terms of the bankers' approach to people who may be getting into some sort of difficulty? I don't think this is about the bank. The government has nationalised this bank, so we're told, but it's beginning to look more and more like it's actually just privatised public money to do that. Um, I think what the government needs to be doing is intervening in these banks and getting a return for the public. We're in a recession, or soon to be, um, people are losing their jobs and they're losing their homes and people are naturally worried about that and they need the government to step in to protect them. All we've seen so far is the government step in to protect the banks. So one very simple thing the government could step in and do is convert these mortgages into social rents, give them council housing status, keep people in their homes, don't repossess them, don't kick them out of their homes, let them pay rent to the government or to their local council and stay in their homes. So no repossessions at all? Absolutely. That's exactly the sort of thing the government should be doing. We're heading towards, possibly, some people are saying, the worst recession since the 1930s. And I think people are asking, the government's thrown 50 billion, 500 billion of public money at these banks. What's going to be left for the people once unemployment continues to go up? We're talking in the news yesterday of figures of around two or three million by the end of next year. Where's the money going to be to bail out the people of Britain? T talking about where the money's going to c come from, uh, in terms of your strategy, mm -hmm. if people are having difficulties and can't afford to pay and they're not going to be repossessed, that means, in a sense, the government is picking up the tab, doesn't it, uh, somewhere? Where is that money coming from? Absolutely not. What I said is the government gets the asset. The asset is transferred into um, government or council and people continue to stay in their homes and they pay a council fixed rent, a, ri a fixed council rent, if you like, for their property. So the asset transfers to the government. So there's no loss to the exchequer there. How quickly could something like that be put into place? Because obviously, for some people, the need is pressing. I mean, Absolutely. you have to say that the government has probably got a lot on its plate at the moment. How quickly could that sort of fundamental change be implemented? Well, we saw a couple of weeks ago when it looked like about three or four banks were about to go bust within the week that the government found a hell of a lot of money very, very quickly. Um, we've been told for years that there isn't enough money, you know, students have to pay fees, etc., etc. The money's not there, yet the government can find it pretty quickly when it wants to. So what we're asking is where's the bailout for the people? Why can't the pressure be on government simply to force Northern Rock to act, act like other banks, which is, in a sense, the criticism is that they're using repossession as a tool far too early in the process, whereas other banks are not doing that. Isn't the sensible approach simply to get Northern Rock now to actually do what some of those other banks are doing? No, I don't think it is. The government's given Northern Rock a lot of money and I don't think the government ought to be doing that without certain strings attached. I think the government should be intervening. I think the government's got a role to play, uh, to act as a guarantor. And yes, when we've given money to other banks such as Lloyds, TSB and Halifax, I think when the mortgage repossession rate starts going up in those banks because they're desperate to pay the money back they've got from the government so they can carry on business as usual, I think the government's got to say no. This is our public money and we're going to act on behalf of the British public, not the British banks. Okay. Andrew Fisher, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.